So multiple sclerosis is a, a degenerative disorder like PD and ADR, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, and it degenerates over time, right? And it's, it's multiple areas throughout the brain and CNS, right? So brain and spinal cord, we got spinal cord affected there, we got the frontal lobe affected there, occipital lobe affected there, it's anywhere, including the medulla inside. It breaks down everything, right? You form little plaques throughout the whole, um, the whole uh, CNS, and this one has the most symptoms, less symptoms than CVA, but it has a whole bunch of symptoms. It's usually diagnosed early, right? It's the third leading cause of MD-assisted suicide, which we'll talk about uh, with end of life regarding a uh, physician-guided gui physician suicide where someone says, you know what, I'm done, that's it, all right? So they have, you have to have a, uh, you have to be of sound mind. So someone Alzheimer's cannot make this decision right, because they, they did not make the decision for themselves. But someone who has like ALS or multiple sclerosis or cancer, they can do physician-assisted suicide, right, as long as they weren't coerced. And it's like a 30-day process in different states. All right, the cause is mostly unknown, but there it is, Epstein-Barr virus, right? Vitamin D deficiency, where do you get vitamin D from? The sun, so it develops in cold places. So people in Alaska, people in less vitamin D exposure, they are going to develop this disease process. And they have to move to hot climates. And then therefore, you would think the symptoms would get better, right? Because now I got the vitamin D. But actually, MS flares up in hot climates. It's, it's, a, it's a cruel disease, right? So it gets worse in hot climates. It develops in cold climates. So where do you live, right? So it's a diagnosis of exclusion. But uh, we can also look, basically, you have a lot of symptoms or you have plaques inside the brain, right, that you can identify on an MRI. All right, so these plaques develop these little bands and proteins can show up on a CSF sample and it's going to cause the breakdown of the cell, the, the myelin sheaths around the nerves, right? You have myelin sheaths around the peripheral nerves. Those are your Schwann cells. What are the myelin sheaths that are around your uh, central nervous system called? They're called oligodendrocytes, right? So those guys are the ones that start getting dead, right? They start getting attacked by our own immune system. Okay, so regularly a nerve can conducts impulses great and nice and fast, but when you start breaking down the different myelin sheaths around it, the nerve impulse can be very, very slow compared to faster conduction. And then also, if you have another nerve that's next to it, right, that is also un bare naked, then that impulse can jump, right? It can jump from this nerve to this nerve if they're both naked. Right, they're both naky. That all that the nerves can just both just hop. That little impulse, say, hey, where, where are you going? Oh, I don't know. Is it, come, come with me. And where's that me coming from or coming to, or going to? It's it's pain. All right. So all that pain can. So you're just moving your arm, and then it, it jumps over to the pain tract, and you get pain with movement. For instance, all right, you get pain with moving your eyeballs. All right, just moving your eyeballs throughout the day causes immense pain. Okay. So how does this happen? Well, you have something made the blood-brain barrier leaky. What's the blood-brain barrier? It's a barrier against the blood in the brain. It's, it's, what, it's what keeps out outside stuff, right? You don't want stuff to come through. If it does come through, it's going to, it can interact, like Epstein-Barr virus or smoking, for instance. These things are causing destruction of the oligodendrocytes. We try to repair it, but then we cause a, a further attack with our B cells and T cells and other inflammatory things that are going to uh, cause a scarring of our nervous system of our around our oligodendrocytes and that's that scarring is called plaques all right so we have these multiple plaques throughout the body of multiple sclerosis throughout the body right and the damage is irreversible sometimes it can repair itself a little bit and hopefully they seek out care and we could kind of maybe stop the b cells stop the t cells stop the inflammation but eventually it's going to lead to permanent scarring and permanent damage and the symptoms are a lot Okay, it can, it's everywhere. It goes, it's in the brain, spinal cord, it's in the ocular bulbar. There it is, where's the ocular bulbar at? Ocular bulbar problems, right? They get diplopia, they get uh, dysphagia, dysarthria. They get all the ocular bulbar symptoms. But now we have also the, so that's the cranial nerves that get attacked. Cranial nerve two gets attacked. We haven't talked about cranial nerve two. That's the one for your what? For your eyeballs, right? So you just, seeing things and moving your eyes causes optic neuritis is a um, complication of this uh, of multiple sclerosis all right you got the diplopia from the ocular bulbar weakness 
They got all the vertigo, tinnitus, nystagmus, all these symptoms that are related to the cranial nerves. What about the, the cerebral lobes? So, because any lobe is now up for, uh, is fair game now. So now the frontal lobe can get destroyed. The occipital lobe can be destroyed and now you're blind. The temporal lobe can get destroyed and now you can't hear and now you can't speak well, right? So the cerebral lobes can, can get destroyed and also the central nuclei. So now you have Parkinson's disease. It attacks the hippocampus. Now you have Alzheimer's disease, right? It attacks any kind of medullary center, any kind of brainstem area. It has no bounds. There's no prediction about what it's going to attack next either. All right, you can attack the limbic system and cause depression, anxiety, like we mentioned, that the, okay, Alzheimer's like. All right, you can attack the motor nuclei and the basal ganglia, and then we got Parkinson's like. You can attack the cerebellum, cerebellum for balance, right? And these guys get what's called intention tremors. That's a difference between it and Parkinson's, right? When they try to move, the movement is not good. So it gets, it, they get a, 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 a tremor with movement. So not only just like motor, Symptoms were just for like neuromuscular, uh, sorry, with uh, myasthenia gravis, right? And then when we talk about ALS, it's just the motor neurons. Guillain-Barre can be sensory, but, my, but uh, multiple sclerosis is guaranteed sensory and motor, right? And autonomic as well. So we have bladder dysfunction, we got sexual dysfunction, we got GI dysfunction. So this is not a, a pleasant disease, okay? It can also damage the upper motor neurons and we can get uh, what are called upgoing toes, because Babinski got it wrong when he identified it in the 1800s. It's not called, Babinski's reflex is bad. You don't want to have a, 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 a Babinski reflex, right? That is not something you want. So when you see it, that is always bad. Okay, the upper motor neuron usually inhibits it. So if your upper motor neuron is your neuron that's in the CNS, right? So the CNS neuron gets eaten away with, mul with multiple sclerosis, and then you get a uh, uh, reflexes that are going spastic. So these guys are spastically moving around. They are very, very clumsy. All right, they're clumsy, they're, they're getting paresthesias, they're dropping things all the time, and they cannot do this right here where they move their hands back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So if you can do that right now, that means you are great, right? But if you cannot do that, you have dysdiodekinesia, okay? Which is also fun to say. All right, so you have problems with um, fine movement, you have f problems with a coordinated movement, and then overall the symptoms get worse with increased body temperature, but it develops with low body temperature, so you can't win with this, all right? So it's a, a bad uh, development of symptom, constellation of symptoms, and we can see this on MRI, we can see those plaques form, all right? We get this painful, like just moving our neck, just moving our head down right now to look at your computer, that can cause immense pain, right? It's called Blair-Mitz sign, where this pain signal, we send the signal down to our neck to contract it, and then it just hopped right, right over to a pain fiber and caused immense pain, okay? So the pharmacology. So pharmacology for, my, for this one, I only want you to identify that it's a multiple sclerosis drug. I don't want you to know all the symptoms and side effects and everything. They're here for in case you ever have to give this during clinical, but this is not a common drug you give during clinical at all. So all I want you to do is recognize, oh, that, that's a multiple sclerosis drug. Basically you study everything else and, and everything else is this, is multiple sclerosis. But one thing they can do is interferon and interferon interferons. It interferes with the immune system. Right? We're going to give a uh, glatiramir that's going to inhibit T cells. So basically we're just inhibiting T cells, inhibiting T cells and B cells. We're inhibiting this whole process of stuff coming across the blood-brain barrier. We're stopping the mobilization. We're stopping the development of B cells and T cells. We're stopping the pr presentation of uh, this, this uh, whole process from getting, getting uh, kicked off. Right? That's the idea behind the medications for multiple sclerosis. So complications, obviously they're gonna end up immobile, but there's a lot of symptom management we wanna give them. We want to keep them awake with analeptics. We're going to control their bladder by using acetylcholine, right? And acetylcholine, we have too much acetylcholine, what's the side effect? Sludge BB, right? And laxatives to, to promote uh, promote BMs, and then neuropathic pain is significant in these patients, so we want to block that as well. And there's different forms of multiple sclerosis. There's forms that are just debilitating over time. There's like a straight line. Whereas other ones where they can have flare-ups and they can get better. And they have flare-ups, they get better. And there's different progressions of, um, of multiple sclerosis. 
<coughs> All right, our last section is ALS. We got two slides in ALS. So ALS is amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. It is Lou Gehrig's disease it used to be named after. And then it's a rapidly deteriorating um, degenerative disease. It's where just the motor neuron tract, so just from the spinal cord down, just that neuron right there is getting uh, destroyed. Okay? It's due to glutamate toxicity. So there's too much glutamate activity in here and it's destroying the neuron. It's just the corticospinal tract, just the motor tract. No sensory uh, deficits, it's only motor. So they become paralyzed and they can feel everything. So that's not fun. So they have this complete destruction of their motor neurons. They have a loss of motor neuron to their diaphragm. So they need to be intubated and get a tracheostomy place. They, need to, they can no longer feed themselves. So they need a peg tube to get feeding, right? The cause is really unknown, right? It's most commonly, of course, occurs in uh, adult onset, but it's basically our skeletal motor neurons are destroyed. So not the neuron out here, the neuron out here, that's a neurovascular junction. That's where myasthenia lives. And Guillain-Barre lives right there on that peripheral nerve going out to the muscle. And then ALS works right here on that spinal tract. Okay. So the upper motor neuron dies basically. Okay. So what else? So the symptoms, so the symptoms again are the same for like MS. We're gonna control, make them more awake. We're gonna give laxatives. We're gonna give antispasmodics. We're gonna control neuropathic pain because they can feel everything, okay? Glycopyrrolate is an anticholinergic that we give for um, excessive secretions. All right, like those two liters of secretions, we can manage those with glycopyrrolate. And it's gonna work just in the, just in the upper mouth and upper respiratory system, okay? Complications, immobility. Right? They're going to need a peg tube. They're going to need a ventilator. Right? Most die within three to five years. Stephen Hawking had it, and he survived a lot longer. There are new medications out. Uh, these three right here are brand new medications that came out last last three to five years, but they cost like $180,000 a year to, to, to be on. So it's not, and it like increases your life expectancy by like 10%. It's not, it's, if you have the money to spend, sure, go for it. But it's, it's not realistic. Rilazole is another medication that they'll, they'll put people on, but it extends your life by 30 to 60 days, 60 to 90 days, I mean, one to three months. That's not like when you take it like at the end. It's like when you're started, if you get first get diagnosed, it will prolong your life by 60 to 90 days, but it's cheap, okay? So it's inhibiting the glutamate from occurring. The other guys are inhibiting this, these inflammatory processes from occurring. The ice bucket challenge got a lot of attention back in like 20, 2016, whenever it happened. And that's how we got these three other medications. We got a lot more research out of it. All right, so the symptoms, ocular bulbar, because what does the ocular bulbar involve? It's, it's a nerve in the spinal cord that's going out to the muscle. So that muscle is not gonna get action because it didn't, the, in, in the meantime, in the middle, it didn't get a, um, the impulse was not able to get, to get carried through, right? They get muscle cramps and stiffness because they cannot move their muscles. They get uh, contractures and such. They get uh, upper motor neuron disease and lower motor neuron disease. So what does that mean? There's a neuron over here. And there's a neuron that leaves the spinal cord. So those neurons eventually deteriorate. So they happen at the same time, kind of. So you lose the upper motor neuron is what sends the signal down. And that's what happens in ALS. That's getting destroyed. And then eventually the neuron down there is not getting impulses. So it just kind of withers away and dies as well. Right, so that's the idea behind um, ALS is that we're destroying this middle neuron here and we have to end up with a tracheostomy, we have to end up with a peg tube and they're gonna have um, upgoing toes because we don't have an upper motor neuron to inhibit it, right? And then we get a lot of, um, we might have a lot of spasticity until it gets, uh, and it starts, the muscle starts dying and it gets fasciculations and it waves goodbye, right? So as far as like reflexes are concerned, the reflexes are gonna be all over the place. They might be very, very uh, no reflexes. They might have a lot of reflexes. I don't really know where it is even in your knee. So what am I supposed to be doing here? Uh, I guess it's just like trial by fire and you just guess. <laughs> right. So that's, are neuro diseases. So this kind of summarizes everything, right? So this is kind of your go-to to get you some framework on all these. So you're not getting lost on little details, right? So we have our CNS disorders, 
and our PNS disorders, right? So where do they, have, so you can draw pictures, oh, this is where they all work here. Like in the first slide of the lecture, we talked about where they're located, right? So you know, like what's happening? What's the pathology? What's the cause? What are the basic symptoms, right? And what are the basic treatments for it? And complications, you can see immobility, 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 so that's, that's all of them, right? Are you know, immobile? And the interventions, there are specific interventions you want to pay attention to to make sure we're not you know, worsening the disease process. This is not comprehensive. This is just done while you were taking your exam today. All right. All right. So that's it for neuro.